Hello people, this is Damon Groove and I am starting a new thing called From the Bedroom to B Port. What I'm going to do is show you how I did it anyway, getting from the most basic idea, developing it to mastering and then sending it. I'm actually going to take you through right through to actually emailing the record companies um, and see how it go, see how we get on with it. So. Alright, so I'm on a pad, some sort of basic pad for the start. Sorry about the clicks, my CPU was struggling. I'll do, for the time being. I like that because it hasn't got too many mid, high mid tones. It's got a lot of highs. That's where I want it to sit, so duplicate that. So you got that. Now go into your second one, rename it. Low or whatever, mid chords or low chords. I'm going to go for low. Okay. Now mute that. So take out all the highs and just leave the root note A little tip when you're on that press control A select them all and then press shift down Shift down on your arrow key. So there's a there's your bass note. Uh, right. So we gotta get a nice sound. Now, there's a golden rule, you never put reverb on bass really, you're not massive. But when you're doing it in a break, it actually really fills out the whole spectrum and slowly to do, so I'd recommend you doing that, that's what I do. Uh, synthetic bass. Process chord, no, synthetic, right. I'm looking for something with low frequency, but no sub in it. Something like that, but that's too much over the top. That's good, but not over. Just want something basic, simple. That's brass. <laughs> bass, bass. Oh, those clicks are annoying. Ooh, that's a nice sub bass, never seen that before. <coughs> right. You don't want those highs in there, so you could EQ out that. You hear the delay and that, it makes a really <coughs> full sound. If you take that off, it sounds weak. Right, so with the chords. Now, I don't like those chords, that sound is shit. Alright, so. 
Let's go, but I don't like this slow attack. There we go. I think that needs a little bit of movement though, so... Uh, it's like a core or something maybe? When the dry wet down. There's a basic chords, I don't know how good that is, but let's get a little loop going. Right. How long has this got to record? Indefinite. Let's hope so. Okay. I hope these are all uh Label in all your samples and have them all in a nice little package where you know they are. One shots, bass, box of tricks, box of tricks. What have we got? <laughs> right, they'll be all good for the drop. Drums. Right. Oh, I know where I've got some drums. Where is that fucking thing? All samples. Yeah, drums. Man. My brain. Where is it? Here we go. Yeah. Oh, that's on triplets, isn't it? Oh damn, I didn't want to do that. I don't want triplets. Right. Control E. It'll split your... Control E. It'll split your uh, finger me bobbies. Control J. Join. Control Alt. Stretch. Same again up here. Control A, sorry. Control A. Oh shit, what did I do there? Huh? Click on the actual loop, Control A, and then stretch them out. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I want that Tom in there though. So, auto filter. Just keep the highs. So I'm gonna low pass filter. You could even, you can filter that up for when you're going for the drop, so. Group it. I'm gonna do a macro, so your macro, hit MIDI up there. Oh wait, no, you don't need to do it, hang on. Mm, map to filter, right click, map to macro one. Yeah, that's how you do that. Now, now right click, show automation. And then you can filter that out. Duplicate time, so you click on your little bar there. Duplicate time, and do it again. Right, oh, I'm doing it again. I thought it does the whole thing. Uh, see, if you ever get your little sh your little points here, if you press shift, click and drag, it gets rid of all the points, and then you can filter it up or filter it down. I'm filtering down, I'm like. Okay. 
Uh, this is not going to be great. Uh, it's not building properly. It sounds weak. And you can't imagine a drop there, really, can you? I, I might cut it off here and come back. I want to find something <laughs> decent. Right, so I'll be back with you shortly. All right, we're back. Um, what I'm going to do with those chords that we started with, I think I'm going to maybe have them as maybe a switch up breaky sort of thing. So I'm going to move them away. Um, leave them over here for a while. And this is what I did. I only did a little quick thing. So I opened the new sound. Massive. Um, and I went to basic pads and it's called Hennessy. I got this. <laughs> I can just hear that. I'm imagining the drop. The other chords, the drop, would have been strange. But I can, I can hear a little choppy uppy bits now in the bass from that. You know, all this shit going on in my head. So, <coughs> so we go with this. Right, so I think some atmosphere now to give that uh, some drama. I'm gonna call this. Uh, wobby thing. <laughs> wobby thing. Why is my next girlfriend? She put on weight. Right. Uh, control Shift and T is a new MIDI track. Massive again. I love massive. I use FMA quite a lot as well. In the breaks, actually, strange. I'm using massive these days for some reason. Right, let's get a little sound. Oh, the re I meant to say as well. I have a a MIDI keyboard, but I know a lot of people don't. So I'm doing all this like this. Scrap that idea for a second. Let's get an audio track and use a sample. Yeah, right. Uh, so, Vengeance sounds. And they have these good little loopy things. sounds it's very clippy or something auto filter on that because those clips are quite loud or I could have compressed it maybe and limited the fuck out of it let's see how that sounds All this will do is get rid of those annoying peaks. Hopefully, I don't know if it'll work. It sounds, it sounds like overdrive. Yeah, it's a little bit better. And with the filter, it'll probably sound not as bad. You can EQ out that uh, here. The bip, bip, bip. Your spectrum analyzer. Spectrum analyzer, man. Off the filter to see where that annoying sound is. Seems to be there. Uh, it's, mm, it's a high clip, so it must be. Let's go into the. So you get an EQ. Bada bada bing. Do a short Q and put the volume all the way up. Around here somewhere. Right, 
There it is. Rid of that. Now I'll get a ping pong delay. Ping pong delay is great, really gives a lot of width. Right, major feedback, don't want the feedback so much. Or the dry wet. that delay going on there the massive now the wobby thing it's got too much reverb Stutter. Got a low pass on that. doing there is I'm finding out a nice nice tone where it sort of it, it jumps out so it jumps out more there really brings that out like so you, you boost it here to hear the nice frequencies then bring it right back down actually you don't need the auto filter you can just do it with the EQ so number four whack on it So how you add width, you can do this. There's loads of different ways you can do it. You can put an auto pan on, which probably would be nice actually. Well, auto pan is a simple way to do it. Let's show you how to do this. Dick a dick a dick a dick filter delay. And put it on before the ping pong. Turn off the mid. Turn off the EQ, the filter. And turn off sync. So you take your milliseconds on either with our left or right, whatever you prefer. Bring it down, leave 1 to 10 milliseconds, 1 to 1, have <coughs> your feedback right down. Alright, so it gives you the width. So you can turn the EQ on. So the width, uh, the wide, there's no real mids in the width. Na, na, na. Right. Also with your EQ, you've got a thing here. So if you hit stereo, you go to MS. What that does is separate the bands into mid side into mid and side. So it's on M at the minute. So I've just EQ'd all the mid here. Um and you hit S and this will EQ what you're hearing in the side. It's sort of what I just did there with the filter delay. Let's say you've got some mad, if you've got a wide sound, especially in a bass, um, and you want to cut out uh, the bass in it. So if you've got your dimension expander on your um, your massive, uh, but you've got a lot of width, a lot of dirty, noisy sounds on the width, you whack on the mid side, and then just put a no-pass filter on that. And so you can actually right hear the frequencies going out. So right there, it will just have literally the highs. So I just want to don't I don't need mids around in the in the left and right channel. I just want it in the center, <coughs> and I want the high bits at the side. Mm -hmm. 
it's a lot easier when I'm not doing a tutorial because more focused. So I'm definitely doing a tutorial, less focused on actual music. <laughs> Right, so what else could we do to this to make it better? creative process really is uh, takes time to sculpt it I don't know but I'm gonna stick with this for the video anyway because the whole idea is seeing if we can get it signed quickly so it's a, more of an experiment so we'll stick with it and see if we can develop it and mold it into something good Do a little arpeggio now. Right, so shift control T, new MIDI. I'm gonna go to FM8 for this one. They've got nice arps. I'm just gonna copy that, drag it down. If you know what I'm doing there, pressing control, I'm copying it, holding control down, and then left clicking, and then dragging down to where I need it. Right, I want FM8. Tommy kangaroo down spot. Right. Come on, motherfucker. Quite nice. Like that. Don't like they always have really FMA always has really uh, sharp 
belly sounds. But if you ever want to tweak them, go into Expert and just start messing with it. So like I just drag down CD. There's your hoise, that's a lot of weird noise. Just cut that out. That's nice. Now we're getting somewhere. That sounds good. Pretty dubstep, you know. Get out ping pong. Ping pong. Right. Um. Okay, I think that'll do for the intro. So you can hear there's a nice build now for a drop. So what we're gonna work on, I'm gonna work, work on the drop tomorrow. Um, and then we'll go back and then work on shaping it, getting. So we'll do the intro, the drop, and then go back to the drop and work on a build and do that. So catch you next time, okay? Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you then. Bye.